So the goal, the goal of today is do an exercise on need finding. So try starting at least because in one hour and a half, let's say less than one hour and a half, uh, will not be all the time to complete uh, a full need finding uh, preparation, but we can surely start and see the main points at least. And then clearly you have the hours in the lab that are there to, again, just to remind you, support you so you can work during those hours and you are more than encouraged to ask the teacher of your team that you will discover tomorrow morning to um, support you, to give you feedback in the moment. So don't wait hmm, the end to discover that you made some wrong assumption or some something wrong in in between but just ask always ask so uh, just a few um, news clearly today is the last day for the group um, composition uh, is there here so here there is around one quarter of the student enrolled so um, but anyway, is there someone here without a group? Okay, but yeah, but without a group, you are in a group. Okay, so but nobody here clearly. Nobody here is without a group at all. Okay, so there are people without a group. So if you are three people groups, uh, look on Telegram. I hope that these people will be a little bit more proactive and will look for uh, a group. Clearly, they're not here, so uh, we cannot help in this moment. Um, and it is due today, so if you are not, I'm telling this for the people that maybe will look at the video, clearly, since you are not uh, interested here, but if there is anyone or some friends of you that doesn't have a group, uh, we can try to manage tomorrow uh, any extra people. Uh, last year we had also a bunch of uh, Erasmus students that de actually added the course after we started, so we added a group in the meantime because they weren't here, so they, can, they couldn't possibly uh, form a group before uh, being physically here or being enrolled here. But anyway, these are exceptions that we can manage. Uh, so assignment one is out. Uh, we will have a look together of it uh, later. Uh, it's due 24 October, and it officially starts tomorrow. Mm? So it's 13 days to complete the assignment and two labs to work on it, let's say supervised, as always, I said before, by us. Tomorrow's lab is fourth to choose your specific domain within the team of the lab and start to preparing the question for the interview. And assignment one is need finding. So you will start from some interviews, will, you are invited to do, as I said yesterday, um, some observation, so observe people in the context, uh, optionally, in alternative, do some context inquiry if you cannot do the observation and came up with some user needs from the results of the interviews and the observation and propose a project idea. And that is not yet a technical solution, but something you want to work more specifically. So we, we will start from the general topic, health and well-being, educational learning, human meets AI, and then you will choose a domain within that team. And then at the end of the process of this first assignment, you will end up with, we would like to do this thing more specifically, maybe for a subset of the people you were thinking uh, at the beginning, but still within the domain and still within the team. And we will have a look at that um, lab. Uh, one note uh, for those that will end up in team number two, that is my, let's say, uh, I will not be here on next Wednesday and Alberto will cover my uh, 
um, team as well. And at a certain point, I will cover his team uh, just to recover this uh, extra, um, this, this exchange we, we need to do because I will not be physically here in Turin, so I cannot attend the lab. Um, so, exercise. We have two goals here. One is to reflect on good versus bad interviews. We, are, we have seen some good questions, bad questions in the lecture, but here there is something more exercise-like. And then the other one is to plan the interview process in a simple domain, so I start developing the question. So this is what we are going to, to start during this hour and a half, and so you need to speak and uh, contribute to this. So first, let's start with the first one, or reflect on good versus bad interviews. So here there is a video that I'm playing. This video has, I think, 10 mistakes. This is an interview that this lady here is doing to this other one uh, about nursery, something about nurse. And this video has 10 mistakes if I properly remember. So are some mistakes in it during the interview. And then in the next slide, there is the video with the, the correct interview, so the one without mistakes, so you can check. So what we are going to do now is that I'm playing this video with subtitles and, and stay silent. And when you spot a mistake, you scream stop and we'll stop the video and you tell me which the mistake. So there are good things in this video and there are errors. It's not everything, it's not all an error. There are appropriate things and there are errors. You need to spot these errors. We are, this is a like six minutes long video. We are going to see just maybe the first two, three minutes, the first, let's say four, five errors that are there. Ready? Yes. My name is Allison Jones. I understand that you've been to several chart trainings, and I am the qualitative interviewer, and so I'm interviewing people and asking them for feedback about the training and how it went for them and how all of that. So, um, is it okay if I talk with you about that? Yes, of course. Great. So, um, what is your name? Shay Bloomer. Okay. Profession? Um, I'm a nurse. Great. And uh, how long have you been a nurse? Um, I've been a nurse for 12 years. Okay. Um, did you enjoy the training? Yes. Would you say that you enjoyed it a little bit? And you... If you need to say stop louder, because, okay. Stop. Why? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a yes, no question. So did you enjoy the training? Yes, no. But, but we don't know, right? Because the question doesn't. Uh, and also it's an assumption question, right? It's not only yes or no, it's also uh, this person should have enjoyed the training because the question is about enjoying the training. And a similar wrong question is, did you dislike the training? Is, uh, a sum, uh, is leading as a question because you, uh, you, you make an assumption that the training was good or not. In this case, it was good. Okay. I'm start again, but you have, if you want to stop louder because there is the audio. I'm a mother a lot. I learned a lot. Great. Okay. And um, did you learn something by the training? Yes, I did. Excellent. Okay. Um, and would you recommend it to a friend? Okay. Yeah, same as, similar to before. Uh, this is a yes, no question again, right? No, let's change speaker. In this case, uh, the interviewer is making another question, is asking another question before listening the. Mm -hmm. the That's one error, so it's continuing to speak instead of having the person actually replying. Yes, there is another thing here. That is true, it's not wrong. Let me try to go back. Can 
for example, it gives possible answer. So it's directing the possible answer. So the question was, I don't remember the question, uh, actually. Uh, can you give me an example of something le you learned? And well, first, it, the person didn't uh, allow an answer. And then, wait. Instead of waiting for the answer, that's still wrong. In addition to that, it also the, the ladies start to provide answers. Like, so for example, some people learn that may think that they're not discriminating, blah, blah, blah. They're giving option to that answer instead of waiting the person to reply. So the person in this case will likely say, okay, it's one of the things you have said because you are giving answer. So never give answer, wait for the answer from the person as it is. So this is double um, problem. I can continue for a little bit. For example, um, some people have learned that they may think that they're not discriminating and that they're very open and respectful of everybody, but then um, when they actually get down to it, they go through the training and they understand that there are things that they, that they actually do have some sort of biases in them and they may not have known it, but then the training helps them discover it and then just helps them be very self Yeah, yes, it's, it's still in the, well, yes, so the, the, the error is still the one as before of the examples because she's still explaining the example. But overall, if you're doing an interview and you speak more than the person that should answer you, there is something wrong because you are there for, to listen to the other person, not to speak. So it, clearly the, sh this lady is speaking a lot and instead of giving space to the other to reply. So. It's logoroic, uh, maybe, but uh, the, the problem is, is, more, is more about that, right? It's, she's speaking a lot instead of giving space to the other to replying. Like that sort of thing. Do you think that maybe that's something that you learned in the training? Um, certainly, I think some of that was covered in the training. Um, we also learned um, about taking sexual history um, and effectively taking a sexual history, mm -hmm. which is a sensitive topic, and it's not something that Yeah, well, well, the video is, okay, no, it's not, that well, this is the video that is moving, it's not, uh, she's not using the phone, I think it's a recorder, an audio recorder, and so she's taking notes, so. I'm sorry, can you say that last part again? I got okay, so maybe she was using the phone, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was a video record, uh, audio recorder, but no, uh, she got distracted. So yes, this is another error, clearly. But here is, is more evident. So you, again, you're interviewing a person, you want to know the, um, the opinion of this person. So if you think about your own stuff, you're not clearly doing a good job. Okay. I'm so sorry. Oh, it's, it's okay. Um, I, I believe I was talking about how we talked about the importance of patient confidentiality and maintaining confidentiality patient records mm -hmm. to protect our patients. Um, you've been talking a lot about what you learned. And now I'd like to ask you a little bit about what you've done differently. I mean, it's one thing to say we learned something, but then it can be quite another thing to actually try to do something differently. So can you tell me anything that you may have done differently because of the training? Um, so what are we doing differently since the training? And there must be something that you did differently. I mean, think about it. That you know. Yes. Yeah, but, but, but well, maybe. Uh, well, we, we clearly don't know exactly the ground, but I think that pr one, one problem is mostly this. There must be something that you did differently. So this is not even a question. This is just saying why you haven't done anything differently after. It's more <laughs> judging people. It's more saying, okay, there must be something you did different. Tell me which things there is. So this is not even a question. It's actually... Uh, Telling people, you should have done this, why not, is, uh, no? 
again, speaking a lot, we are still seeing this pattern in, in place. Uh, and then, yes, maybe also the question was difficult, but uh, it depends on the actual context of the, well, we don't know exactly the, the, the learning was it was, right, the, the training, so we are just seeing an interview. In, but surely this, there must be something you did differently. How do you know? I mean, you're here to interview me. I, I will tell you if there is something that will did differently, so. Again, examples. Patients or um, being more empathetic than you were before. Any, anything like that. Do you think any of those may be things that you did differently? Um, yes, I'm, I'm sure there must be things that I'm more empathetic than I was before. Great. Okay. So um, now. Also, if I ask. I give you options to so say, okay, they think they will be more empathetic. Is is the actual answer, or is the answer to uh, make me happy and continue? Hmm? So we don't know. Hmm? So also the person we don't know, don't know. So again, giving space for the for the answer instead of providing examples. Okay, and this is the game. You, if you want, you can continue at home. Uh, it's another three minutes. Um, no, I want to change, no, okay, this is the correct one, so we are going to see the same more or less three minutes, okay, uh, in which the interview here is well done, or without those errors, so let's see if we have spotted the error uh, as well, or if there is still something that you think should be No, I think that, you know, after the reply saying, okay, thank you, great, is, is not a problem, right? Yeah, Why? It was great, excellent, uh, no, like, a thank you more like uh, a qualifying uh, word. Oh, okay. So, I don't know, maybe it's just something where it's more common mm. English, but... Yeah, you know, the, like, well, I... I, I like, well, um, I think they are, like, more American English, so it's oh. pretty from the accent, not English, not British English, and it's pretty common for them to say awesome, great, excellent for whatever, um, with respect to, let's say, Italian, for instance. Um, so that could be also something that is more contextual. Uh, but let's see what worked well. So we can see, a uh, few minutes. It's the same interview with the same people on the same topic. It's actually just the, the right version. And you can stop if there is something that you notice different or particularly good. Hello, my name is Allison Jones. I understand that you have taken a series of charter training workshops. Oh. I'm doing qualitative evaluations about the training so we can learn more about how the participants think about their training and what they've learned. Um, so I'd like to So just to, so this was a yes-no question, but it was more about consent. I will ask you about this thing. Are you okay with that? We can proceed with the interview. It was not an actual question for getting information. It was more about, we are here speaking about the training. Are you okay that we are speaking about this? Because if the person say, no, I don't want to speak about this, then the interview stops. It's more about explicit consent to proceed. It's more ethical standard. My name is Shane Loomer. Chain. Yes, that's another, you know, it's trying, she's trying to make the other person more comfortable so that they, she can be more open to answer, less 
you know, the, the first one as a tone as more like I'm here to um, test you like a, an exam. I'm asking questions to get the answer and then I will give you a score. Uh, here it's more, let's have a conversation, more as, let's say, friend, let's more in a more comfortable way so that people are more open to reply, more frank in the answers. So, yes. Jane, what do you do for a living? What's your profession? I'm a nurse. You're a nurse. How long have you been nursing? I've been a nurse for 12 years. Oh, interesting. So, first I'd like to start out and just kind of get your immediate reaction to the training, your memories of, of how it felt to be in the training. Um, what was your favorite part of the training and your least favorite part of the training? Um, well, um, I would say that my favorite part of the training was... I, I think that also the part that uh, it's, she's not saying did you like the training, but uh, tell me what you like and what you want. Yes, we said before that what you like the training, yes, no, was yes, no, and also was uh, giving an indication that was you you have to like the training with the answer instead here is more neutral Tell me one thing. We have seen this in the example of the good question, right? Tell me one thing That was positive and one thing that was negative and also I think she started with the positive one, right? That the facilitators really took training very seriously Part of the training and your least favorite it was the most, the favorite and the least favorite. So first the positive and then the negative. Because we try, we tend to, um, if I'm going to ask you, tell me three things about something, you are going probably to start with the negative ones by definition, to complain, everybody, not just you. And so starting from the positive also give this, forcing people to focus first on the positive thing. So think about one positive, one negative, not just negative thing. Uh, I want to ask about the problem. Uh, we saw one question that maybe was kind of similar. Is if you have someone who kind of wants to do thing, what do they like? So we assume it was something they like. What do you think? But here, if I get them correctly, here they are asking both things, right? They are asking the best and the worst thing the positive and the negative, so that's both, so it's more neutral as, uh, as, as an approach than do you like the training as before. So if she was asking, tell me the favorite thing about the training, that is not a yes or no question, but again, it's assumed that there is only favorite things or mostly favorite things. Instead asking one favorite and one least favorite, so yes, it's still a more positive as a tone, if that was what, what you mean. Uh, but it's also pretty normal, just not to give the negative impression, right? But still one positive, one negative thing. No. Um, well, uh, I would say that my favorite part of the training was that the... Uh, notice that she gives space and time to answer. It's not, okay, you're not answering, I will interrupt you. Facilitators really took time to have discussions with us, and it was a very open um, kind of discussion that we had about a number of the, the topics that we were discussing. And I felt like um, I wasn't just being told things. It wasn't a one-way sort of experience. We were very much um, learning from one another, and um, it was exciting to be in a group with my peers and to be able to discuss some of the issues that we confront every day and learn different ways of approaching them. Mm -hmm. I know the training was a while ago, but um, I'm wondering if in these conversations that you were having with the facilitators and with some of your colleagues, can you remember um, any particular topic that was especially interesting for you? Well, one of the uh, topics that we talked about um, was taking sexual histories. And um, as nurses who are working in, in HIV care and testing, it's often important for us to take a sexual history. Uh, I think I should be very careful to not put her in a situation where she needs to be good or to answer. Uh, she says that uh, she remembers that she said the question, I know it's been a while ago. She says, if you remember any particular detail, so she needs to be very general and almost yes
Yes, exactly. So people are complicated, and so you you want this person want to get to get most of information in most precise and uh, useful way for the company, whatever, uh, um, get the this this training, this demonstration, this interview in. So clearly putting the other person in more comfortable situation, being attentive, permissive, or if you remember, it was a while ago, etc. is always, uh, it gets better approach from the other instead of getting people that retract or protect themselves, like defending, it's open people. So yes, it's attitude also. It's not just, it's, there are the questions, but there's also attitude. Okay, so let's continue for one minute and then we can proceed. Ah, uh, no. I continue to click. But it can be very uncomfortable, for example, um, depending on who the patient is. We have patients who come in who seem too young for us to need to take sexual history, patients who frankly seem too old to, for that to still be relevant. And um, it was interesting to talk about how we all sort of approach it in a different way and how a number of us, frankly, were fairly uncomfortable with the topic. But um, having this kind of discussion about it really helped me to feel um, more empowered to talk to all of my clients about their sexual history. So um, I heard you say that you are now taking these sexual histories differently. And I'm wondering if because you're taking them differently, if different kinds of information actually comes out from your consultation with the patient. Yeah, I think certainly. Because the truth is that I was so uncomfortable doing them before. So notice that no, basically no yes or no question, even if the, the answer is more yes yes and and so in addition to that and also notice who is speaking more so before it was the people it was she was logoroic um, now she's basically just asking questions say mm -hmm. also less uh indeed less less great less ex excellent less uh, more careful more neutral more calm than before mm -hmm. uh, and well, she, she doesn't distract by the phone, etc. So this is actually the same interview um, by the same people made on demonstration purposes in which you can see, and also the discussion are more or less the same. And also before they were speaking about sexual history, etc., etc. But here you get way more information about the nurses, the patients, etc. than in the other interview, even if it was the same training, even if some topics were uh, emerged as well. So. If you want, you can continue watching this video. There are again six minutes. Well, this is longer. Why this is longer? So the other one was six minutes long and this is 14 minutes long. Why this is longer to you? She took more time to listen. She took more time to listen and the other, so she spent more time to talk. Hmm? So this is the same question, the same topic, but the other one was a lot of me speaking, me in people that in, do the interview speaking and not listening a lot, not giving space to the other to talk. Here, there is a lot of space to the other to talk, even if there are maybe information that's not immediately useful or relevant, still listening. Okay, this, again, if you want, you can uh, continue to watch them, but it's to make this stark uh, distinction between different mo ways of doing the same interview on the same topics, and also similar question, in a way, with the errors that we've seen. Uh, and you can also see that the errors that were made in the first version were actually the one listed, if you remember, in the bad questions that we have seen uh, yesterday in the class. So you can also use that as an indication of where to move forward when you will need to create your own uh, questions. So now let's try to imagine that we want to do need finding. So that was the first goal. Uh, recognizing bad versus good interview, and we, you play the game, let's say, and successful, I think, um, for the three minutes we have seen. Um, so now let's try to do a work similar to the one you are going to do in the lab for the project. Hmm? So instead of having the three teams that we have, I made up another team that is transportation, right? So totally generic, generic team. 
So the first thing that the lab, the assignment will ask you is to, or one of the first thing is to choose a specific domain within the team. So what can be a specific domain that we want to understand more with some people to understand more within the team transportation. So let's use this as a sample, as an example. Hmm? Public transportation is still large as a domain. So let's a little bit, public transportation could be an option, but let's move a little bit down because public transportation means everything, right? So trains, long range trains, commuters, bus, etc. So it's, a, it's still is smaller than transportation, but still uh, large. public transportation in the city, smaller. So we, we're not speaking about trains from one city to the other, but we are speaking of trans public transportation within the city. People, let's put people in this. Public transportation used by everyone, used by children, used by students, used by adults, used by the elderly, used by women, used by pick one or, or more than one. Let's add people to this. Workers, Workers. Students. and students. Choose one. So let's imagine that we need to do the actual interview. So if we say public transportation in city for workers and students, how many people do we need to speak with? A lot, because students, workers, so let's try to be a little bit more specific. Students or workers? Or, or both, ideally also both, but in this case, choose one. Students, uh, let me add commuters or not. So random users of public transportation or students that need to use public transportation every morning, every day. Commuters. So specific domain could be um, commuters, student, commuters, uh, using um, public transportation in cities, in a city. Okay? So that is a more specific domain with respect to transportation. And clearly what we want to know now is if there is any problem there so that we can understand how we can try to solve those problems. You know, problem framing is to be done before problem solving. So we first need to understand which are the problems, which are the needs of students, commuters, using public transportation in a city. Specific domain. Hmm? Uh, in the domain, we can also speak about commuters uh, alone with a student, and now we need to speak about people. Hmm? So students and commuters. Hmm? So they are our uh, so let's first of all speak about these four categories. So what, are, what is immediate user to you in this domain that we said? Students, commuters, uh, in public transportation, blah, blah, blah. Who are the immediate user of this domain? Students, commuters, right, clearly. Okay. Who travel every day within the city. Well, using public transportation, that's clear, obvious. Sportation. Okay, then we will come back to the immediate user in a while. There are other three categories in this slide. Some of them could be also merged, but let's keep them separate. So the immediate user are the ones that you immediately want to uh, clearly uh, do something for or investigate something that are the students' commuters. Uh, here, for the immediate user, we should ask ourselves, who are the students? It's university students, is high school students, is both, any other detail about that. But before doing that, let's try to have a look at the other three categories to understand what they are. So what is, uh, so the other three are not necessarily immediate user, clearly. Hmm? 
So who are the domain expert to you for this specific um, domain we selected? Maybe others. People that work in the administration of the public transport, for example, in uh, for, in, for the autobus, the ones that uh, can read the statistics about how many tickets uh, are. Uh, okay, how we can call them? Uh, because people that work in the administration could be from the one that fix the the, the, the that highlighted the bus is broken. To, to a secretary, to this kind of people that you are saying, uh, that are the one that has a more overview of the, of the entire process, number of tickets, number of buses, right? You, you mean something more planners? It's not really planners, but that level of administrator. administrator. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's call it administrators, administrators of the public service, uh, public transportation. With this, um, with this idea, with this meaning, so not the administrator like uh, paperwork, but more about statistics, more about, so the expert of the domain, the one that's know about, they could be also city planner. So the one who plans the path of the buses. These are not immediate users, clearly, but they are expert on the domain that is traveling within the city in some hours because they have statistics or because they do the plan, so they can change things if they want. Okay, this is probably a little bit more difficult. Lead users. In this case, probably the lead users and the extreme user can be similar. So the, 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 these three, the domain expert, the lead user, the extreme user, are different things, but in some cases they can also um, overlap. Mm? So you said before the driver, right? So the driver could be an extreme user. Why? Mm -hmm. So the extreme user could be uh, someone like the bus driver that is, is, is in the place, right? He's involved because he's driving these people, so he's seeing commuters. But he's not one of them, clearly. He's also seeing non-commuters, also seeing non-students, but it's extreme. He could bring perspective about things that happens, about problems that happens to the immediate user in a level that is different by the domain expert in some cases. Mm? So for instance, bus driver, extreme user. Lead user, who could be a lead user? In some cases, so the extreme user, the lead user can be the same. Senior student, that's been using public transport for five years. Let's add some, yes, yeah, I would add something to the senior student. I would add something to the seniors. So yes, yeah, seniors, people that, commuters with a lot of years, um, but also I would try to add something more. People that stop using uh, public transport for any reason? No, that's probably more extreme in a way. It's more, I think, on the direction that he was saying. So people that use the public transportation for a lot of years, but let's add something. No, the need, we don't know if they need, right? We, not yet. The controller. Uh, the controller could be an extreme user, in a way. And those use different software. Those use? A different, different the software. Yes, that could be one. Okay, so let's say, um, let's call it 
expert, no, yes, expert, uh, student commuters. And now let's try to say what is expert. So who are expert? Those that maybe use multiple buses or trams to go to a place every day for multiple years, and maybe they don't do two stops. Maybe they need to do like 15 stops to reach a place. Maybe they live in Mirafiori and they need to come here. So it's a lot, it's like half an hour on a bus or multiple bus and trams. So these are lead users. They are not, not the very common, not the most common commuters, but still they have acquired a lot of experience within the, ro the role. They are leading. So is this differentiation between these four categories clear enough? In the text, there is another example. Um, is this differentiation quite clear? Yes, no. Maybe. So immediate user, let's say it again. Immediate user are definition. Well, immediate users are the easiest. So immediate users are the one that the yes, the, the most common, the one that you directly uh, want to involve, you directly want to do something for. So here it's doing something for student commuters, so the immediate users are student commuters, whatever. Hmm? And then again, here we should better specify maybe high school students versus universities versus etc. So we, we, we need to... to hmm? So we can say, for instance, only um, university student hmm? and only if they uh, do more than two stops. So we can reduce this the space if we want. Hmm? Uh, because otherwise maybe less than two stops is, is commuting or it's more... Uh, I don't want to walk for five minutes and taking a bus. It depends where the two stops are, which, which are the city, but let's imagine the stops are close enough. So you can specify more the immediate user. Again, think that this will lead to some people you need to interview. So the larger the categories, the more people you need to represent all the categories. So if you say every student's commuting, you will need to get middle school student if they're commuting alone or with a parent, um, so traveling alone, well, university student is a consequence probably, so without a parent, um, if they are traveling one stop, two stop, etc. So the larger the immediate user, the, the more people you will uh, potentially need to interview, to speak with, to understand the needs. If you are restricting, you are clearly serving a specific population, university students, traveling more than probably five minutes on a bus, uh, within the city with public transportation. And then you can refine a little bit more. Domain expert. Domain expert are the ones that are expert of the domain. Maybe they're not even the user, but they know a lot of things about the domain. So they can give you uh, perspective. It could be also a previous student that now they don't um, travel anymore, but they are expert or they study about transportation. It could be also professors, could be also people that study about transportation, public transportation. Uh, activism groups about public transportation, etc. Could be expert of the domain specifically you are targeting, that is commuters, students in public transportation in, in city. Uh, lead users are the expert in a way, um, users, still users, but expert, so like the student commuters we said before, multiple years, long distances, etc. etc. And the extreme users are someone Sometimes, again, sometimes it could be also the same as the lead user. It depends on the specific domain. In this case, it could be, for instance, the bus driver. That is another, dif another perspective on the topic, because the bus drivers see that. Mm -hmm. So in the um, lab, in the assignment, we will ask you to interview at least... Uh, I'm not, I'm not remembering, so I don't want to say something wrong. Let me read. 
just to bring a connection with the, the assignment. To, um, to interview at most one domain expert, so at most means zero or one, <laughs> and at least one lead or extreme user. So if the lead and extreme user are overlapping, it's fine because you need at least one. And clearly, the majority of these should be two immediate user because they are the one that you want to interview. Uh, and then there is an extra restriction that is at most one Polytechnic student. That could be lifted in some cases. So if you are doing, so last year we had a group doing something about Polytechnic students, so clearly they cannot skip Polytechnic students, so, but in general, if you're doing something about transportation, you can include at most one Polytechnic student. Uh, and we will see this in a while later. Okay, so target user. You figure out these kind of um, users with the uh, description that we, you want to, to refine. Then we need to the next things that you want to, to do is planning an interview. So the first question is, to whom? In the lab, in the assignment, we will ask you to interview at least four people. Four people are not a lot of people, clearly. Uh, in a real interview, there you will be more interviewing more than four people. Since we are uh, adapting this to a semester-long course, we are shrinking the number of people for the various steps. So four people with those characteristics, but you have to pick them. So who you are going to interview? So in our case, we need to find students traveling with those characteristics. We need to find the bus driver available to, um, to speak with you. And you maybe need to observe also, so you can do a, a travel on a public transportation with them, with some students, with some immediate users, so that you can also observe how they do the travel, how the plan, how they look for the bus arriving, all the action that brings the activity of commuting uh, along. Then you typically have to decide if it's a one-to-one -one interview, a focus group, or a survey, but we made the decision for you, it's a one-to-one -one interview. So you will interview four people separately. Uh, then you have to just define the general structure, if you remember the the story based mm, we discussed yesterday, so introduction, and then there is uh, the climax, and then there is the ending. So the general structure of the interview, the questions, mm, the structured question, we are going to ask you a semi-structured question. So you have to prepare some question to investigate which are the needs, the problem, the advantages, the disadvantages, etc., of commuting in this case, in this example. So how many questions, which one, keeping track if there are bad questions, good questions, etc. And then you can also think, but keep them as ideas, any follow-up questions. So any question on this non-structured part of the interview. So maybe after this it makes sense to ask this and then be prepared to ask other, um, to ask other questions as they arise in the conversation. And this is the unstructured part in which you can start imagining, but you cannot prepare, clearly. And then, the recording of information. You are interviewing people and you will need someone who takes notes, or maybe you want to record audio or video or take picture or a mix of those things. You need to keep track of the results because you will need to do something to extract the needs from this uh, interview. So, the structure, we already have seen those, this in the slide, but here there is a, a more specific structure. So the introduction, you also have seen in the video. So first of all, telling them why are they there doing the interview. We are doing an interview for a course about public transportation, blah, blah, blah. How long it will take? We will have 10 questions for you or half an hour or 15 minutes, more or less. Uh, we are not testing you. We are not, you are not doing an exam. There is no right answer, wrong answer. There is just answer. Uh, 
um, there are no wrong answer, how it works, we are recording, we are not recording, we are taking notes, so you have to speak with one person, etc. And you have to ask permission, explicit permission, to share and elaborate the responses and eventually, optionally, recording the interview. Without consent, there is nothing you can do. If they don't want to be recorded or they don't allow you to use the answer for the course, you cannot proceed with the interview. And this is the introduction. Once you have the consent, once you set the stage, uh, you have the questions about the topic. Hmm? Again, some structured for everyone, some others will depend from the user, someone, some others will be uh, impromptu. So clearly you may have some questions that are common to everybody, some question for the domain expert, from some question for the immediate user. Maybe you are not going to ask everybody the same thing. And the possible steps are always starting large, background context, then going deep, and then clarification, success and failures, and finally reflection. Uh, and in the end, the question about the user, maybe how often, well, not in the end, but in the process, you can also ask questions about the user, how often they use public transportation, for how long do they use the public transportation, for how many stop do they use the public transportation, if they use every weekday, every day, also including the weekend, etc., etc. Mm? So to just get a better context of the thing. And it's just about the interview, and the text will also ask you, if possible, to do an observation, so you can, for instance, travel with these four people somewhere, or with these three, three people, the immediate user somewhere, commuting with them, that day uh, and then in the end thank you if you want to give them something it's optional clearly um, and any contact information if you want to follow up or if they need to tell you something that they forget mm -hmm. so this is more or less a general structure of the interview um, so which could be some questions you can ask in this domain to the immediate user for instance Let's keep the introduction. Which could be some question you can ask. If you want to understand which are the issues, which are the problems, which are the things that work well for university students commuting with public transportation within the city. You are assuming that, so the question is how familiar they are with a different line, you're assuming that they are familiar. So not really. Which is the information you want to get from that? Let's try to think from the answer. So which, is, which are the information you want to get? Do you want to know if they know all the lines? Do you want, which, which is the thing you want to, to know? if you know how the public transportation is structured. And this is important for commuters, why? So maybe a better question could be? That is yes or no. So. What do they use the transportation for? How often do you use web transportation for? So if they say, I use uh, all weekday for going to university, you have your answer. If you say, I use every day to go to university, to the gym, uh, to, you have your answer, right? So think about the information you want to get and then build the question uh, in a way that is more general and possible. So uh, we said, can you repeat the question? Um, what do you use the public transportation for, for instance? Hmm? And, and you don't have to assume that they are, ask if they are commuters or not, because you are recruiting commuters, so they, you know that they are commuters, and they are university students, because you are not speaking with anybody else.
Well, in theory, that is, um, so asking, are, the, are you using the transportation? That should be a screening question, meaning that if they're not using the transportation, you are not interviewing them at all. That is a good question, but I get, I get it. But this is, not a good, this is a good question, but not, uh, that, that's called a screening question. So here you have four people who are, who you know, who are university students and commuting on public transportation. So if they're not using public transportation, they are not in the stage because you, you say, thank you, you're a, public, a, a private car, thank you, bye you are not included in this interview because you are just speaking with those that are university students, et cetera, et cetera, commuters, public transportation. So it's a screening question. It's a question to say, okay, I need to recruit four people. Which one? So can you do the interview? Do you have, do you use public transportation to, to no, you have a car, thank you, and next. And then when they say yes, you have the question. So what do you use public transportation for is, is a, actually a pretty good initial question because it's large enough to understand the topic, like we said here, start from background context. So that's good. How do you use public transportation to understand the idea of the network of transportation? Let's try to write at least another one. The In a single, how many bus, uh, how many transportation means used in a single day or in a single travel to, to go? They are different, right? They, they bring different um, information to you, which are more interested to in this case. So if they use the bus for going to the gym, et cetera, they will tell you five, okay. Uh, because maybe they use five uh, overall in the day, but maybe just one for go to the university and the other four are for other thing. So which is the information you are interested in too? You want to understand which are the practices, which are the problem, which are the experiences in this, this, this path. So some general questions are good, but you also want a certain point to right? uh, go deep and go on which are the problems, which is the most favorite thing you can you do in the, what you do during the, the commuting. How long is the commuting? What you do during the commuting, for instance, you play music, you listen to a podcast, you speak with a friend without giving example, but these are possible answer, right? Uh, so, for instance, another question could be, what do you do during the travel? If you're doing something, well, something will do. I'm staring out of the window, so there's something to do. Yeah. On average, how much time uh, do you wait? People are terrible in estimating, so on average, how much time you uh, wait for anything is uh, unreliable answer, unreliable question. Um, a better question if you want to know if they wait the bus too much, right? That was the purpose of the information. Um, How often they are using the public Sorry? How often they use the... It's not the same thing, right? Yes, how often it's, again, but here it's how much you wait for the bus. So if there is, if, if you wait. So it could be... Uh, what if I want to know about the, how the Oh, that could be... That could be <laughs> done in multiple ways. One way could be, tell me, uh, as the video said, one positive thing and one negative thing about public transportation, or tell me three challenging activities uh, during the, the two three challenges that you experience and three um, satisfactory uh, positive experiences you have during transportation. And from that, from the challenge, if they 
give you some significant challenge, you can have some follow-up question immediately. So that's one way. The other is how uh, between one and five, where one is not difficult at all, and f one is easy and five is difficult, or one is not difficult at all, and five is difficult, very difficult, how much you think that is difficult to, um, to use the public transportation. If they say four, they will, you will ask, what do you mean by four? And they can do an example and follow up on that. These are all possible way of uh, getting the same, that information, right? Um, I was thinking about waiting time. Um, Mm. Yes. Can you ask them maybe what the what they do while waiting for the camera or what what they like to do? Well, you you're assuming they are waiting. That is not a bad assumption typically, but um Yeah, that's a tricky question because the first question should be do you wait for the bus? Yes, no. Um And we are not assuming, we know. Yes, that could be. When you are waiting for the bus, do you think, no, do you think no? Yes, I got it. I got it, I, I don't know now how to say that, but we say when you are in the cases where you are waiting for the bus, let's say maybe it happens, maybe not. Um, are you annoyed? Are you um, feeling to wait too much? Are you something like this? So opinion, but, but still is some kind of information you can get. That could be something you, you can ask. Uh, When you are in a bus station, which are the acti uh, how many activities, which are the activities you are doing, uh, or you are doing some activities and which one? That is, no, I'm not doing anything and the stop there, or yes, I'm reading a book, and then you can proceed. Yes, that's an also another option to get this information about waiting time. And this, you know, you have to figure out. We are not going to write all this, but. You have to figure out, you know, in a way, the activity that can happen. So there is waiting at the bus station, at the bus stop. There is one moment where things can happen, when problems can arise, or not, or opportunities can arise. And then there is the actual travel, uh, and then there is, well, the end of the, of the, of the course of the travel, maybe the, the stop is immediately at the university, maybe it's, maybe it's not immediately, maybe they need to change the bus, maybe they're not. So these are all, again, another stop, but it's not the, big, the first stop, is maybe they need to wait for another bus because they stop there and it's not immediate, so it's similar to the beginning of the course, but it's not uh, the same, maybe not. And there's also tickets. Then you have the annual, uh, tickets or you buy, 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 buy tickets every time and did you get any problem with the tickets etc et so there are many moments that you can focus on for getting information and looking for opportunities to uh, improve those moments support the travelers in travel better Mm -hmm. That, so setting sometimes less than, maybe not two hours, less than 10 minutes, more between 10 minutes, that could be a possibility, but again, it's estimating time. Um, so you know what one thing you can do, in addition to ask the question we said, is for instance, uh, do a contextual inquiry. So 
go with them travel with them one day back from the university and so you see if they are waiting the bus and you can ask are you always waiting like this and for this long time or more or less and that is not an well this is sort of an estimate but you are seeing people waiting for 10 minutes and so you can ask is more or less like this or not and so that's a conversation it's more part of the observation that's not the formal part of the interview but the information you get by observing in this case and not by by asking because you see that they're waiting and you see if they're waiting in all the stops or just at the beginning or if they you can ask are you always lucky to get the bus immediately when you uh, go down like today and they will say yes i'm always like this or no this never happened just today because they're you, you with me uh, and something like that so compl you can complement in this case specifically you can complement and the text of the assignment will encourage you to do this you can complement the the information you get from the questionnaire with from the interview with observation with contextual inquiry with observing in this case of the public transportation is easy because you just just you have university students you go out of the polytechnic or you find too many university students taking a bus right so you need to find probably three of them wanting to speak with you and allowing you to to do the path towards home so all of these things are to keep in mind when you are going to start from your team in the lab and get the domain get the question etc think about the full process of the activity think about which are the information you want to get and how to ask them without assuming without leading question without a yes no question without asking them to estimate time because they are bad or if you need to ask about estimating time do it but no knowing that that is an estimation that could be wrong so don't make much assumption much building on that specific number that's given but add some observations some other thing to support that number so that alone the question is not strong enough to be used as to, to learn something but you add something together like an observation like something so you get more information yet it's the goal here is to get as much information you can on the opportunities and problem they can get because the next step is extracting needs from those and if you have information you see what's working what's not working you can say okay actually all four of them have problem with tickets so maybe handling this problem is a need in a way or ending the payment or ending the uh, entrance of the bus or something or ending the waiting time is a problem or finding activity to do while on the bus is a problem or is something that is an opportunity to do something maybe it's not about the travel but it's about a specific moment in time during the travel so keep the mind open and try to get all the information possible to um, to retrieve the information you need the last five minutes let me go uh, through this you can read it so it will ask for a bunch of things actually it's long but it because explain a lot of things that are also examples etc so the first thing you need to do is actually what we started to do today so select a domain of interest within your team hmm? public transportation commuting student university uh, within the transportation team same thing plan your interviews so you must interview at least four people if you get five six is better but minimum four and considering stream stakeholder extreme users etc modality the interview must be done in person with people in their context as much as possible uh, make an extra effort here to observe some people in action so the observation while traveling try to do some of this maybe not with all the four but maybe with the immediate user you can question prepare some predefined question the structured part a reasonable range is between 10 and 20 question so if you got three question no if you got 50 question no as well try to stay between 10 and 20 and then if it's 9 or 22 is not a problem but more or less the range is that one uh, and then there are example etc materia you need to record what how and why people are saying and doing what they're saying uh, take pictures we will ask you for pictures so take pictures of something you notice 
or something that you notice during the observation, or some artifacts. Maybe they will show you Google Maps for planning the travel or for looking for waiting time. So take pictures of things that could be interesting for you. Take notes uh, of the question because you cannot remember everything. And then interview, do the actual interview. Uh, the duration is typically between 30 and 60 minutes. It depends on the context and the domain, etc. But I'll allocate that time. Uh, ask for consent. And the procedure is that two people in the team, and no more than three, must be present on each interview. And one should lead the interview and the others should take notes. This will allow a group of four to do the interviews in parallel. Because you have the question, you have the material, you know the procedure, you can split the group in two and do the interview in parallel. So four people, two people in parallel every time, if you want, or you can proceed as a group. But one is speaking, is doing the interview, is conducting the observation, is doing the work, and the other are taking notes. Because without notes, you cannot proceed. Taking notes, pictures, etc. Uh, here there are some suggestions for finding participants, but again, it depends on the specific uh, domain you are in. And then, after doing the interview, we will also spend some words during the next lecture, but since this lasts until the 24th of October, we will have a bunch of lectures between that, this moment. So you have the interview's done, you have your notes, you have your picture, etc. The first thing to do is trying to extract the user needs. Hmm? Thinking of not what they are saying specifically, but what are the need that they express. Hmm? Think again of that example of, I don't want a faster horse, I want a faster way, a better way to move from one place to another. Hmm? And here there is written the same thing that is also in the slide. So uh, needs are a verb most of the time. And if you find, if you can structure a, a sentence like people needs a way to, or people need to be able to, it's easier that what is following is a, a verb and it's a need and not a solution. So people needs to be able to have an app that is clearly not a need. Um, but what this potentially app is doing is, is maybe is a need. Brainstorm a list of user need. Pick, start from the results, start from what you have seen, observe it and, and write some needs and link them to the interview. So this thing emerged from interview number one, two, three, and from question number four. Link them specifically to what you are asking. From that list, you need to identify which are the three or four deep user needs. The ones that are more common, the ones that are more intense, that, are, that happens more frequently, the ones that are more challenging. You have to pick those ones. You maybe will end up with ten needs, you just need to select three or four from these. And then for each of these needs, you have to brainstorm at least five possible solutions. This is all work that you've done without involving people, just as a team. So you have three user need, and you need to find five solutions for each need. And here there are examples. Mm? Uh, so if you have three needs, you have 15 different solutions. Uh, and then at the certain point here, there is an example. So need is drivers need to use a restroom during delivery without traveling out of the way, so courier driver, and possible solution. Shops, gas station, gyms can receive recognition our driver-friendly location for allowing drivers to use restroom. That's a solution. It's not an app, it's not features, it's just something that can happen. Another solution could be driver can see the location of nearby places with parking a restroom and provide this location with business, so some advantages. Again, not specific feature, not specific technical solution, but just potential solution. And then all, once you have all these uh, 15, 20 solution, as a group you have to vote to find the single top solution you want to continue with, and that will be your project idea. So we are doing all of this to come to, I want to support university student traveling commuting university student traveling to spend better their time while in the bus. And 
you need then on that point one project name mm -hmm. so there are two parts one is actually the interview and the preparation and doing the interview and the other one is once you have done everything just just in a way to say starting from the findings starting from the results and synthesize the result analyze the results to find first user needs and then something that will help you to solve that specific need and here there are links there are more discussion we can also uh, have a look uh, at the text uh, while in the lab and the output of all of these will be a set of slides that you will need to put on your um, Google uh, sorry on your github repository when it will be created um, which basically the main things you will do hmm? so how many participants four people two extreme user one extreme user two intermediate user who they are university student not university students it depends on the specific so basically the things you the main things you were asked to do you just need to put them in a few slides including the solution the project uh, name and that slides will be the one that we are using to give you feedback on this process uh, after the 20, 25 of October so we are projecting uh, 15 days in the future now so all of this needs to be done by the 24 and the 25 um, you will uh, get feedback on that and clearly in the two labs and after the class classroom and another moment if you need feedback question clarification you can always ask to any of us and specifically to the teacher of your team as soon as you discover it tomorrow okay any questions okay so we i will meet some of you tomorrow in the lab uh, have a good evening and i'm still here while i'm plugging etc if you have any questions have a good evening.